Hi there, and welcome back to Understanding Medications. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at one of the specific types of opioids called loperamide. But before I get to uh, the specific actions of loperamide, there's a number of things that I'd like to talk about. The first of which has to do with nomenclature or the naming of something, and specifically, I'll be talking, of course, about the nomenclature of medications. If you know anything about loperamide, you may actually know it by one of its many different names. And you may be wondering, why is it that Ken calls it loperamide instead of one of those other names? And an example is right here. This is the actual chemical name of loperamide. Nobody actually uses the chemical name of loperamide except for the scientists who are working in the laboratory and they're trying to synthesize the medication. So just scratch that one off your list. But a lot of people remember the brand names and one of the common brand names of loperamide is Imodium. But there can be literally hundreds of brand names in the world for any drug. And each of those will have the generic name on the label. So you can see that the generic name is the most important one to remember. So what is the generic name? The generic name of a drug is the abbreviated version of the chemical name. And I'll be showing you some examples of how we achieve that generic name. You may eventually need to know at least a couple of the brand names for any given medication, but in the first instance, it's always best to remember the generic name. We just learned that the most appropriate drug name to learn is the generic name of the medication, and if you have time, possibly one of the most frequently used brand names, but the generic name is the most important. The generic name is a shortened version of the chemical name. For instance, the generic name for this chemical structure is metoprolol. You'll never need to remember the chemical name or exactly how we got that to convert to the generic name, but I do want to stress one important point here and then come back to that topic later with a lot more information. Many drugs have a suffix that will tell us a lot about the medication. For instance, the suffix for metaprolol is O-L-O-L. -L. Remember that the way we got the O-L-O-L -L was the 2-O-L portion of the chemical name. So you can see that any drug that has that particular suffix has a portion of the chemical structure that's the same. And if a portion of the chemical structure is the same, do you think that maybe the drugs have similar actions? Indeed, in this case, that tells you that all OLOL -L drugs are from the drug class known as beta blockers. And beta blockers slow down the heart and therefore decrease the blood pressure. Every beta blocker slows down the heart and decreases the blood pressure. So I've got a question for you. You're looking at a list of medications that a client is taking. They are taking propranolol, prednisolone, and lorazepam. Pick one of the medications that this person is on and very briefly describe what it does. And although you've probably never seen the drug propranolol before, you may have noticed the O-L-O-L -L suffix, and that told you that it was a beta blocker, and that decreases the heart rate and therefore decreases the blood pressure. To be clear, this is a practical session that is aimed at teaching you how important the suffix is to identify the medication. In reality, you need to aim to really understand each medication that you learn. But when you learn about the beta blockers, the OLOL -L drug class, you will understand five of the 200 most widely prescribed medications. Metaprolol, atenolol, propranolol, nebivolol, 
and Timolol. And no one expected you to recognize the other drug classes, but just in case you were curious, lorazepam is an anti-anxiety, anti-seizure medication that's in the drug class called benzodiazepines. And you may know about the benzodiazepines as being referred to as benzos or as being related to Valium and Xanax. Those drugs end in azepam or azolam, and when you learn about that drug class, you'll learn about five more of the 200 most widely prescribed medications. Alprazolam, which is Xanax, clonazepam, lorazepam, diazepam, which is Valium, and temazepam. And finally, prednisolone is a corticosteroid. Corticosteroids are some of the most important medications that we have to decrease the immune system response but they're plagued with side effects, so you'll really need to spend a long time getting a clear picture of that drug class. The other thing about corticosteroids is that they have several different drug roots and stems, and not all of them are suffixes. Not all of them are at the end of the word. Some are prefixes, and some are just in the middle of the word. To quickly identify a corticosteroid that you've never seen before, look for the asone, pred, or cort, somewhere in the generic name. Fluticasone, methylprednisolone, momentasone, prednisolone, and hydrocortisone are all corticosteroids, and when you learn about the corticosteroids, you'll know quite a bit about at least seven more of the 200 most prescribed medications.